All right, let's learn about animals, some wondrous creatures that live on this earth. I love learning about them. They are one. I can hear some right now. There's some birds chirping outside in my backyard. They're animals. That koala on this slide has the necessary koalifications to be an animal. Get that punny line right there. My wife is probably scoffing at me. She's over in the distance over there, and she's probably like, oh my goodness, what a lame, crazy teacher you guys have. And guess what? She's right. She's always right. She's my wife. But anyway, animals, they're awesome. Just lovely creatures to hear about, listen to if they're out in your backyard, and dissect maybe later, too. But yeah, um, once they're dead and stuff. But yeah, they're just... Some of the behaviors, some of their qualifications are something that we're going to learn at, learn about in this video. Okay, let's take a look at our phylogenic tree of life. We've learned about the prokaryotic domains, and we are inside the eukaryotic domain, learning about animals, those complex, wondrous individuals. And there's a lot of different species of animals, but they are all eukaryotic, multicellular, mobile or motile uh, heterotrophs, which I think you know about already. So we're taking a look at some specific kinds of eukaryotes uh, that can be classified as animals. And as you would guess, uh, this is a very widespread, diverse group of organisms uh, that we're going to learn about. Uh, a lot of them, animals that you think about are bilaterals have bilateral symmetry they are they have a backbone and stuff but some of the organisms in this grouping in this classification include some things that you wouldn't even consider to be animal like uh, that that is going to be our focus uh, in this video but no matter what you say um, there are uh, characteristics that all animals share I mentioned that they're eukaryotic. Their cells have nuclei, and membrane-bound organelles, mitochondria. Pretty complex cell work there. Uh, they are all multicellular. Uh, like I said, they're they're uh, pretty mobile. Some more than others. Um, for example, I'm a lot more mobile than like a sea sponge. It's true. Might not look like it all the time, but I am quite the athlete. Much more athletic than a sea urchin. Anyway, uh, heterotrophs, uh, they've got to go out and get some food, uh, hence the ability to move. Uh, and then they don't have any cell walls on any of their cells like plants might or bacteria or archaea. And the last characteristics that, characteristic that all of them share is that they have a blastula. What that means is in early embryonic development, uh, the groupings of cells organize them in certain layers, some different than others that we'll learn about, but all of them do have kind of a group of cells that start to differentiate from each other and make the organism unique. I like to think of animals in two major groups, uh, the first being invertebrates. Those are the ones that uh, you could probably guess do not have a backbone made of bone or cartilage. Uh, they, some of these animals uh, are more well known than others, but anyway, we'll take a look at invertebrates first and then focus our attention uh, in a later video on vertebrates. Now, vertebrates do have a backbone made of bone or cartilage. Uh, they, again, are very diverse too, ranging from this weird sucker fish lamprey animal uh, to lizards, camels, humans. Uh, so that uh, is a look at invertebrates versus vertebrates. All right, so like I said, we're going to take a look at some really simple invertebrates first in this video. Uh, these are going to be classified into certain groups, and each group is going to be a little bit different or a lot bit different than the one prior to it. Uh, so we're going to learn about everything from sponges to squids uh, when we're talking about simple invertebrates. We are going to take a look at um, some different groups 
along the way. Some of these are have bilateral symmetry, others uh, have more of a radial symmetry like cnidarians, and then uh, others uh, belong to their own classification. First group of simple invertebrates we're looking at are sponges. Uh, this group is also known as uh, porifera, uh, a certain uh, classification of animals known as porifera, and they have pores, I guess uh, you could say. Uh, it's really hard to classify sponges. They are really weird organisms. It's just like a bag of cells. There are no tissue or layers uh, for the blastula. Really, they could hardly be classified as animals. They can't hardly move either. Um, but they are classified as animals, and over 10,000 different species of sponges exist. And they are pretty cool. Um, I'll link a video here, uh, Jonathan Bird's Blue World on sponges, and he really uh, shows how efficient uh, sponges are at eating. They are filter feeders, and he injects this really colorful fluorescent dye uh, liquid into ocean water and the sponge actually pulls it in to the center filtering the water for any food that might be floating around in it and then pumps it out really efficiently you can kind of see that on this picture on the preview of the video um, but i would advise that you do watch it because uh, it's pretty cool so sponges that's where we're starting and we're heading somewhere else uh, now we're going to take a look at cnidarians you don't even have to look at the well you can look at it but you don't say the c in cnidarians. Now this includes jellyfish, uh, sea anemone, anemones, say that ten times fast, sea anemones, corals, and hydra. Uh, really cool animals. They all have radial symmetry, which means any way you uh, slice it, I guess, from bird's eye view, it's going to be the same as, uh, it's going to be the same on both sides of that perfect halfway cut. Um, they are symmetrical radially. They have two germ layers as part of the blastula. Uh, some really cool animals uh, pictured here. Jellyfish, if you get stung, I'm heard, I've heard you're supposed to pee on that foot or that leg or get, get your friend to pee on you too. Uh, I don't know. It, it must work or it's a just a trick to get someone to pee on somebody else. Not my kind of humor, but hey, to each his own. Uh, yeah, corals, hydra. This hydra, there's a video that I'll uh, show a link to. It doesn't seem to age. It's like got a fountain of youth. It, it, if it's in the right environment and gets enough food, it seems to not age at all and seems to live forever, which is, that's kind of cool. Um, but yeah, those are cnidarians. Next classification of animals we're going to take a look at are flatworms. Those are also known as platyhelminthes. Platy, I believe, is uh, that prefix just means flat, and helminthes means worm. So they are flatworms, platyhelminthes. These are uh, bila have bilateral symmetry, uh, so they are the same on like left and right, I guess, but not if you slice it any way you want. Um, they, ha they now have three germ layers, and you can see that in this picture here when they first start out. Uh, this is new. There, there's like a digestive cavity in the middle with those three germ layers. So we're starting to see organisms that can uh, eat and digest food a little bit differently than the one before. Uh, they are also acelomate, which means there is no space within the organism uh, besides that digestive cavity. So flatworms, some of them can be colorful and amazing looking. Some maybe not so much, but yeah, they're unique and those are the flatworms. Next stage here is the roundworms. I'm just going to start playing this video because this rotifer that's feeding looks like quite the mechanism of an animal. Uh, really strange. It actually rotates these front appendages near its head and tries to engulf the cell and throw it into that digestive cavity. What a cool looking animal. This is a microscopic view of it. Uh, anyway, roundworms. They are also known as nematodes. Nematodes are roundworms. They also have bilateral sy 
bilateral symmetry, three germ layers here, but now they have this fake uh, cavity here called a pseudocelum. Uh, these roundworms are just a little bit different. Uh, and as you can tell, this rotifer that's classified as a roundworm is a lot different. All right, the next classification of simple invertebrates are called mollusks. Uh, now all of these have a muscular foot uh, to move. Uh, as you can see, they look similar to each other, but uh, not completely the same. There's a lot of different species included here. Uh, and the blastula does look different than the classification of animals before it. And uh, these include, uh, uh, include chitons, clams, scallops, snails, slugs. I was getting hungry there for a second when we were talking about clams and scallops, not so much snails and slugs. Um, octopus and squid. Uh, I will include two of my absolute favorite videos about animals and the amazing qualities that octopus, an octopus has uh, in its ability to uh, escape through like a one inch diameter hole for this video and in this video uh, it's breathtaking how quickly uh, they can blend into their environment uh, when when they feel the the need to do so so mollusks they're pretty cool animals the last uh, grouping of simple invertebrates and we'll call these simple invertebrates too before we move on to more complex kinds of animals uh, but the last group we're talking about are echinoderms. Uh, these have a true coelom in the blastula. Uh, they're also really known as the vacuum cleaners of the ocean. Uh, include sea cucumbers, sea urchins, starfish. Uh, these are really important animals in the ecosystem of the ocean. They actually, like like a vacuum cleaner does, it cleans the, the bottom surface. So all this dead matter uh, that finds its way to the bottom of the ocean, the echinoderms are going to start cleaning that up. And in this video, you can see a sea cucumber like eat a bunch of sand, basically, and sift out through its digestive system all the useful food. And then the waste is basically really, really clean sand. It poops out really clean sand, those echinoderms do. Um, so that... That is all for Echinoderms. Check out that video as well, and uh, see you next time.